How much do you love baseball? Could you go to a game every month? How about every week? Well, Dale Jacobs and Heidi L.M. Jacobs love baseball so much, they decided to take in 50 games in one summer. And all of those games took place within a couple hours drive of their home. Now that's dedication. They wrote about their experience in 100 miles of baseball, 50 games, one summer. And it brings Dale and Heidi Jacobs to our airwaves tonight from Windsor, Ontario. Nice to meet you too. This was a great fun read for yours truly. And I, it sounds like you had a pretty good time writing it as well. We just want to show everybody where you guys are. And Tony, if you would bring up this map, all of the baseball games that you went to are essentially within that circle, within that radius, within, you know, a couple hours drive of Windsor, Ontario. And Dale, uh, I guess the first question is pretty obvious. Whose crazy idea was this anyway? <laughs> Uh, I think it was collaborative. We had uh, had tickets for the Tigers for years. And uh, after after about 10 years, we decided we wanted to see other kinds of baseball. We kicked around what to do. And uh, we had this idea, this is kind of a riff on 100, on uh, 100 mile diet. What happens if we see as many kinds of baseball as we can within 100 miles of our house? Heidi, why do it? <laughs> well, I think we were both feeling a little disconnected. We'd had season tickets for quite a while with the Tigers, and we were just thinking, what else is out there? And it made sense for us to think about, you know, what's in our own backyard. And so it narrowed it down, and it gave us a bit of a focus to try to rethink and relearn what we knew about baseball. And so having that 100-mile um, perimeter and the 50 games was a, a nice sort of structure to work with. And it was, uh, yeah, it made a lot of sense at the time. Yeah, Dale, that was the neat thing about it, because obviously, if you're sticking within 100 miles of uh, your home, it's not just Major League games. So what other leagues were you watching beyond Major League Baseball? So we saw everything from high school baseball. That was the youngest. We saw high school baseball, university baseball, uh, amateur men's league. We saw minor league, uh, a couple single A games. We saw independent minor leagues. And uh, we saw some historic baseball where they play uh, with 1865 rules. That's a, a pretty big thing in Michigan, actually. And was it the plan, Heidi, from the very beginning to write a book about the experience? I think it was. Once we had the idea of doing this 100-mile 50 game thing, it made sense because there's such a great narrative about it. And it, there's so many people interested in baseball in this area. So we talked to Dan Wells at uh, Bibli Oasis, and he was really game right off right off the bat. So uh, yeah, it made sense. And I think it would have been hard to do after the fact. So the fact that we started right at the beginning to think about taking notes and, and writing um, really helped the writing of the book. So it has that immediacy of actually being there. Well, Dale, I know for most people watching this, the Blue Jays are obviously Canada's team, but there are some places in this country <laughs> where the home team or the favorite team actually is not the Blue Jays. And you're in one of those places because you guys are a hop, skip and a jump from Comerica Park in Detroit. How do how do you and how did you find the baseball experience at Comerica Park? Oh, Comerica is a great place to watch watch baseball. We spent uh, we've spent a lot of time there, and it's it's one of my favorite parks in the major leagues. It's uh, it's got great sight lines, and it's you know it's less than ten miles from our house, uh, and it's just it's just great. We can actually take the tunnel bus over and and see a game and. It's great. It's a good day out and uh, a lot of fun. And I was interested in your observation that your focus on the Tigers, which of course is Major League Baseball, despite how badly they're doing, sorry, but <laughs> your focus on Major League Baseball actually obscured some of the things that you love about baseball. What do you mean by that, Dale? Well, I think one of the things that happens if you watch only Major League Baseball is you you start to forget what a difficult game baseball really is. They just make it look so easy. And so I think it was good to get back to watching, you know, high school students and university students learning how to play the game and, and watching amateurs in their early thirties play just because they love the game so much. And then I guess the other thing is a lot more can happen in some ways in the uh, at these other levels because there's not just strikeouts and home runs there's there's a lot more uh different ways that scoring happens and and there are there are error more errors and 
it's just more unpredictable, I think, what can happen at the park. It is true that baseball has got to be the only game where you can fail seven times out of 10 and still end up in the Hall of Fame. That shows you how <laughs> yeah. difficult it is. Uh, we're talking, of course, about a 300 average over the lifetime of a career. Heidi, do women and men, as a general rule, watch baseball differently? <laughs> That's a great question. Well, this woman and this man certainly watch baseball differently. I have to say that. I can't speak for, for all men and women. But I think one of the things that was really interesting to me was watching people watch baseball and seeing the different ways that people interacted with the sport and how they watched and watched what they watched for. Um, and there's been a lot of attention given to the fact that there aren't a lot of female fans at MLB games. And what was really interesting to me is how often when we went to uh, some of the amateur and high school and um, college level baseball, how often those stands were filled by women who really, really knew the game and they knew the players and they knew everything about it. So um, it really, it really depends, I think, on on who who you're talking about and, and which fans, but it, it was an interesting observation, certainly. Now I should ask both of you this next question. So Dale, you start us off here. I can imagine actually doing what you did. I think 50 games in one summer sounds kind of cool, but every game with the same person, not sure about that. Did you two, Dale, ever get on each other's nerves during the course of doing this? No, I, I don't think we did actually. We, uh, at the games, we were kind of in our own little worlds a little bit because we were so focused on taking notes and and our own engagement with the game. And then, we really talked only going to and from the games as we as we talked about our expectations or debriefed and you know that's obviously not nearly as much time as we've had together since since covid came so maybe it was a good uh a good way to to get ready for that <laughs> heidi how about you did you ever get sick of them no 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 not at all and i and i think dale's right when we were working on it we were so um we we're almost alone together in the park because we we're so focused on the notes that we were taking and, and watching the game and, and thinking about uh, what we were seeing in front of us that we really, the only time we actually really talked was probably in the car there or on the way back or occasionally between pitches, but we were really trying to focus on watching the game. Um, and so I think we did end up just sort of having, you know, blinders on and uh, just focusing on the field. How close Heidi did you come at any point in the project to saying, you know what, <laughs> this really is more than I'd counted on and let's just pack it in and forget about the rest of it. Yeah, it was a game two, I think. Uh, <laughs> it was it was cold and it was snowing and I was soaked and this game never ended. It was just winter and I thought, I have to do this 48 more times. What did I just sign up for? Um, thankfully, the next day it was sunny and it was lovely. And uh, yeah, it did get, it did, it was really fun, but it was a lot of work and we were both working full time at the same time. So this was all sort of evenings and weekends and um, juggling all those things was uh, complex. But yeah, I think that second game I really was wondering. And then there was, I can't remember, one game when we saw about seven or eight games in a weekend and one game I just thought I have, I have no thoughts left on this sport. But, uh, but I think that's, that's the, you know, it's got to be work, right? You have to sort of really put yourself into it and and make a decision and uh, to be there and be present. And um, so that's what we did. Well, Dale, there is the notion that that some people have that they won't play a song that they love too much because you can play it too much and eventually get sick of it and never want to hear it again. Do you ever worry about that with baseball? I, actually, it's funny you ask that because a, a friend of mine at work said exactly the same thing to me. And I said, baseball is more like music and every game is like a different album because you see something different at every baseball game you're at so i i don't get tired of it because it to me is infinitely various uh, and i see something new at the park every game now heidi you two made an observation in the book that uh, had never occurred to me before and i don't know if it's true so i want to put it to you you made the observation that fans truly really only want to see their team hit and not pitch you really believe that? Well, actually, I think our friend Greg made that observation and I wrote it okay. down. But it, it is interesting because I think what happens is people want to see home runs and they want to see, you know, their team score. But pitching is much more 
um, I mean, it's whether you want offense or defense and pitching. I think one of the things I learned about it was how interesting it, that sort of part of the game was and how complex that was. And sometimes that's really hard to see at a distance and it's certainly not as crowd pleasing, you know, a great curveball isn't as uh, amazing to most people as it, you know, a home run or a grand slam or all of those kinds of things. So uh, yeah, I think it, it's, uh, it was an interesting observation that Greg had made. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to work for a guy at TVO named Peter Herndorf, who was the chair and CEO back in the 1990s. And he used to say, when I want a sports experience that is a big kind of assault on your senses, rock and roll, lots of loud music, I'll take my son to a Raptors game. But if I want to know what's going on in my daughter's life, I will take her to see a Blue Jay game. And Dale, I presume after doing 50 games in one summer, I presume you get that, right? Oh, absolutely. There, one of the things I love about baseball is that there's room for reflection. There are pauses. If you go with friends and you're not trying to take notes for a book, you can talk to each other. Uh, it, it's a more leisurely paced game. And I'm exactly the same way. If I want that kind of experience, I'll go see the Pistons. But if I, if I want some, something that I can talk to the people I'm with and be alone with my thoughts, I'll take baseball every time. Heidi, can I get you on that too? I, 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 I find that is certainly the case that um, baseball is a different experience from any other sporting event because you actually can have a conversation with the person you're with. And in fact, that's in some ways the most memorable part of the experience. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the things that we talked about is how often we brought people with us to the game, how even if they weren't physically with us, we were sort of had these presences there. And uh, like Dale said, there's a built in contemplation, there's a built in time um, to think about it. And to me, um, I think I like baseball for the same reason I like reading fiction, because you're always thinking what's what's coming up next? What's the next move? Uh, where could this go? What are all the possibilities? And so it has that sort of narrative in it and you're all watching it together and you're all thinking about oh is he going to strike out is he going to hit a home run are they going to go ahead are they going to you know there's so many possibilities and uh i think that's what i love about the sport is that possibility and sharing that with other people for sure now heidi i have to follow up with this very crucial important question which you do to mm -hmm. touch on in the book and that is how many times since you did the 50 games have you put your water bottle in your bag without tightening the lid Never, never. <laughs> <laughs> and why is that? You just do it once. That's my friend Alex said. You just do it once. And yeah. You did it once. Yeah, and what every were the time. consequences so, that one time? Well, yeah, I had a book bag full of full of water uh, right before class or something. So it was a bit of a disaster. But yeah, no, I, I uh, double check, triple check now. <laughs> good for you. It's always good to learn these lessons. Now, yes. I, I want to ask you, Dale, about this. Um, <laughs> there's this song that uh, I remember several years ago when the San Francisco Giants were in the World Series and they played this song over and over again, Don't Stop Believing. And, and there's this lyric in the song, just a city boy born and raised in South Detroit. <laughs> and it wasn't until, Dale, I read your book that I came to realize, where is South Detroit anyway? <laughs> well, we always say South Detroit is Windsor. <laughs> because <laughs> that's right because it is south we're south D detroit always talks about it. it's east side and west side nobody ever talks about north side or south side of detroit so we always say we're south detroit once you go through the tunnel you're in windsor you're in south detroit many people don't know that you actually have to go north from detroit to get to no excuse me the other way around detroit is north of windsor you want to go to Correct. Detroit from Windsor, you got to go north, which sounds yep. bass backwards, but there you go. That's the way it is. Yep. <laughs> uh, okay, Heidi, how many Major League ba Baseball parks have you been to and which is your favorite? Oh, I don't know how many I've been to. Dale could probably guess more. Uh, I have to say, I, I, yeah, Comerica, it's sort of, I guess, you know, like baby ducks imprinting. Um, that's where I really loved baseball and where I learned to watch it. I just love sitting up in the upper decks and looking out over the Detroit skyline. I love that. So yeah, that would be my answer for sure. Okay, Dale, how about you? How many have you been to and which is your favorite? I think I've been to about half of the current parks, so 15 or 16. Uh, Rig Wrigley is still my favorite. I, I will go there as many times as I can. Uh, I love Comerica though, it's, it's home. 
Uh, but Wrigley is Wrigley's a great place to see a ball game. Well, I, I hate to break the news to both of you, but as you can tell from my tie, you've both given the wrong answer. The correct <laughs> answer is America's most beloved ballpark, and that'd be Fenway Park in Boston. And I, you know, you guys have been there, yes? No, we haven't. No, so that's I've why never, we can't. Oh, never. Well, that explains it. That. You got to go. Yeah. Once you go, you'll <laughs> know I'm right and you're wrong. Okay. So, get we'll on that this you. summer. Yeah. <laughs> now, have you been able, Dale, to go to any ball games yet this year? Not this year. So with Not the border that. closed and uh, locally, they haven't started playing baseball and, and we don't know if they're going to be able to yet. That's still up in the air. So no, I haven't. The last time I was at a game was uh, August of 2019. Heidi, same for you, August 2019, last time? Oh, uh, I think I was May 2019. So yeah, no, we haven't been for a while. Although we have, I will admit, we have gone to the ballpark and just sat and imagined a ball a ball game here and there. So uh, but that's about it, yeah. If you build it, they will come. That's what we're hoping. <laughs> <laughs> well, which which uh, I guess leads to the next question. Heidi, what's your favorite baseball movie of all time? Oh, it's got to be League of Their Own for sure, uh, hmm. which has got the best line, of course. There's no crying in baseball, which I love because there is always crying in baseball, um, <laughs> usually by men. So I think it's a great, a great film. Sandlot is a close second, I think. But uh, yeah. You know, as we sit here taping this right now, uh, there was a guy for the Phillies named Williams last night who hit his first ever home run in his major league career, and it was a walk-off home run that gave the Phillies the win. And you are so right. In a sport where allegedly there is no crying in baseball, he <laughs> bawled his eyes out after the game was over when his family yep. came on the field to see him. That was a lovely yep. moment, I got to say. Yep. Dale, how about you? Your favorite baseball movie? Uh, for me, it would be Bull Durham. And uh, it also has my favorite line about baseball, which is, I believe in the Church of Baseball. <laughs> Susan Sarandon. You two both obviously have too much of a sense of humor because the, for me, it's the natural. And there's nothing funny about that, but there's something very mystical and lovely about that movie. So, mm -hmm. okay, we agree to disagree. That's fine. <laughs> now, I guess um, because you've written this book about baseball, I'm obliged to ask you, um, you did this tour in 2018, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so the book yeah. is based on your encounters with baseball in 2018. Dale, do you remember who won the World Series that year? In 18. Oh, I'm so no, disappointed I don't, it's taking you this long to figure this out. <laughs> well, I don't know, should, should I give you a little hint here? Oh, oh I, I, I bet it's the Red Sox, isn't it? Now, how did you ever come up with that? How did you <laughs> ever manage that? And Heidi, I mean, we deal with empirically provable facts on this program, so I, I guess I need to ask you, which is empirically provably the team of the 21st century in major league baseball oh i i don't know if we've seen them yet um <laughs> i will have to go with detroit really no yeah. i'm sorry that is the incorrect answer we were looking for yeah. boston red sox because they have won four world series <laughs> in the 21st century compared to the tigers oh. uh how many would that be how many have they won in mm. the 21st century yeah mm. but it's only like what are we mm. the first 20, 21 years of it. We still got a long way to yeah, go. We got a long That's way true. to go. That's true. We can we can actually review the next 80 years and we'll do that in 80 years and figure out who came out ahead. We're in for the long game here. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you gotta be. Now, uh, I want to thank you two for joining us on the program tonight. And I want to thank you as well for bringing out your whooping sticks for this one. That was really good of you to do. Again, <laughs> another so expression, much. Heidi, I'd never heard before. What's a whooping stick? I have no idea. I really have no idea except for some older man was saying it and some children were trying to say it and their mother was very upset about it. So I don't really know what a, a whooping stick is, but we, we would be happy to learn. But uh. <laughs> I did learn about it in your book. That's Dale <laughs> Jacobs and Heidi L.M. Jacobs. And their book is called 100 Miles of Baseball, 50 Games, One Summer. And your assignment, you two, is to get to Fenway at some point in the next 80 years. OK, that's your job. <laughs> we will do that. We well, will do that. Well done. Yes. <laughs> Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is made possible through generous philanthropic contributions from viewers like you. Thank you for supporting TVO's journalism.